disorder, and I call these sodium disorders, but the first um, disorder we're going to talk about is the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, or SIADH. And I've got my own little acronym for this. My acronym is SIADH, we're swimming in antidiuretic hormone. I've got too much antidiuretic hormone. So if I've got too much antidiuretic hormone, what does the urine bag look like? It's empty, right? So what's happening? Patients are holding on to water. If I hold on to water, what does that do to my sodium? It dilutes it. So the other name you might hear this called is dilutional hyponatremia. And often you'll see sodiums less than 120. I mean, that's not the, the cutoff for SIADH, but often you'll see very low sodiums um, in patients because, again, they're holding on to water. What does that water do to sodium? It absolutely dilutes the sodium. So let's think about this. If, if I'm holding on to water, what's going to happen to the osmolality in my blood? So in my blood, my serum osmo, remember a normal 275 to 295, if it's high, you're dry. If it's low, your blood is dilute. So the serum osmo is going to be low, right? Because we're holding on to water, it's going to dilute out my blood. But my urine osmolality is actually going to be high because the urine is concentrated. These patients are holding on to sodium. So the urine will be very, very concentrated with a high osmolality. And then in general, the other clinical sign you see is decreased urine output with these patients. So what are some causes of SIADH? Um, the two most common causes are pulmonary and neuro insults. And I've looked this up numerous times and nobody knows exactly why, uh, but those those are the two most common causes. Again, pulmonary neural insults, um, infections can cause it, uh, different carcinomas. So there's a carcinoma called oat cell carcinoma, uh, where you can, SIADH is actually pretty common, uh, different tumors, uh, stress from surgery or illness can also cause SIADH. And I always say, like when I'm teaching a live class, like how many of you have ever taken care of a patient with SIADH? And hardly anybody raised your hand. But really, we all have. We may just, we just don't always call it SIADH. We might just just call it hyponatremia. So complications of hyponatremia. So complications of hyponatremia. I mean, think about this. If my sodium's low, what are the complications of that? And I think one of the biggest is cerebral edema, right? Um, just from having a low sodium, patients can, um, they'll be at risk for seizure activity. Um, so these are the things you've got to really pay attention to. And then falls too, right? When patients have low sodiums, they act all, you know, their, their, their uh, LOC can be altered. Their balance will definitely be altered. So these patients will be on fall and seizure precautions many times. So how do we treat it? And the answer is there's no magical treatment. You just have to treat whatever is causing it. Uh, but here's a couple things. Am I going to let these patients drink as much water as they want? And the answer is no. So we're going to fluid restrict these patients. Um, and then we have, just have to focus on whatever is causing it. And then the other thing we can decide is do we, there's two kind of two approaches to managing this, is do we A, give maybe like a diuretic to get rid of excessive water, which hopefully will bring up the sodium, or do we replace the sodium, or do we do both? And um, and that's the decision that's that's usually made at the bedside. So again, we're going to fluid restrict. We could use a hypertonic saline, so like 2%. 3%, 5%, whatever uh, your hospital is used to using. And then we can also use diuretics. But here is the, um, and so I would say, let me just kind of back up. A loop diuretic would be the most commonly used. So if I give a loop diuretic, that's going to get rid of water. It also could get rid of sodium, but it's going to get rid of water, which will hopefully elevate the sodium because you'll have less dilutional effect of the water on the sodium. Um, some other things to think about is you want to correct super duper slow. You do not want to correct it, uh, a sodium quickly in patients. And so usually we will correct no more than like 8 to 12 mil equivalents per day. So it is a super slow correction. If correction is done too quickly, patients can develop what's called demyelination syndrome where they have permanent nerve damage. And so, uh, so it's really, really important to correct super, super slow in patients. And so usually we'll say about like a half a mil equivalent uh, per uh, per liter per hour or 8 to 12 milliequivalents per liter per day would be the max that you want to uh, correct the sodium. All right, now 